This year has sucked for most of us. Sucked big time. But for Tesla, 2020 has not only been the year in which it has set record after record, but the year in which it revealed how it plans to dramatically lower the cost of producing electric vehicles and how to make the batteries for them. The year Elon Musk baited the competition time and time again with a stream of meme-tastic tweets and the year in which it became not only the most valuable automaker in the world, but one of the most valuable companies in the world. And today, Tesla revealed how well its third quarter went, with the publishing of its official third quarter report for this year. Despite COVID, factory lockdowns, and an impending recession, it managed to obliterate Wall Street predictions for both its revenue and its profit, ending the quarter with $14.5 billion in the bank. So in keeping with our usual tradition of breaking down the figures for you, here's everything that you need to know from those financials, as well as some of the snippets of information that we learned that hint at what the future holds. And as usual, for these videos, figures are in US dollars. Let's look at production figures first. While the second quarter represented a COVID-caused drop in production for Tesla, things were back at full speed for the third quarter, with Tesla producing 16,992 Model S and Model X combined, and 128,044 Model 3 and Model Y combined. This translates to a total vehicle production of 145,036 vehicles, a 51% increase on the same quarter last year, and a 67% improvement on the second quarter. Following on from production, we have, of course, deliveries. Of the cars produced in this quarter, 15,275 Model S and Model X combined were delivered to customers around the world, with an eye-popping 124,318 Model 3 and Model Y delivered, resulting in a total vehicle delivery for the quarter of 139,593 vehicles. Production and delivery figures are not only both new records, but they also are significantly higher than any previous record set by Tesla. And Tesla also ended the quarter with just a 14 day supply of cars, which is a really healthy figure for an automaker to have and shows that cars are still very much in heavy demand. Tesla now says it has the capacity at its facilities around the world already in place to hit half a million cars this year. And given what we have already seen, this means that Tesla needs to make at least 170,000 cars in the fourth quarter. Given the increase in Q3 over Q2, I think that that is eminently achievable, and I think most of the people watching this would agree. And I should note that half a million vehicle target is possible just from Tesla's Fremont Model 3 and Model Y production line capacity. Add in the Model 3 production capacity from Shanghai, and it's closer to 750,000 vehicles, plus the 90,000 or so vehicles that the Model S and X line could theoretically produce in Fremont, but obviously haven't of late because Model 3 and Model Y are Tesla's primary focus. To accommodate all these new cars hitting the road, Tesla has increased the number of supercharger sites and connectors worldwide by 7% when compared to the previous quarter, resulting in a total of 2,181 supercharger sites throughout the world. Sadly, though, the number of store and service locations, as well as mobile service fleet, only grew by 4% and 1% respectively. Why do I say sadly? Well, given the explosion in cars hitting the road, Tesla really does need to expand its service and mobile service fleet in line with the increase in sales, or it risks finding itself in a service hell with long wait times and slow repairs. But honestly, that's a very small personal observation from what was otherwise a really stellar quarter. In addition to all of the growth in its automotive arm, Tesla also experienced a dramatic growth in its solar energy and storage business, with a total of 759 megawatt hours of storage installed during the quarter and 57 megawatts of installed solar products. This represents a 59 and a 33% increase respectively year on year. And the year on year figures are, to be honest, a little bit of a fairer metric because of what happened in the second quarter, because of COVID. 
dropping solar prices to $1.49 per watt in the US after tax credits has surely helped Tesla increase its solar panel installations, especially as, like electric vehicle purchases, people do tend to buy solar panel installations towards the end of the year in order to minimize the time between buying their system and then getting US federal tax rebates for the same. And with photovoltaic solar panel federal tax rebates due to fall next year, well, I'm guessing people are moving and buying solar right now. Which brings us to the final figures. During the quarter, Tesla's automotive revenue topped $7.61 billion, which, to be fair, included a not insignificant number of regulatory credit sales, $397 million worth in total. Some people have been claiming that Tesla would not be as profitable without them and essentially trying to cast shade in this matter. But frankly, even without the credit sales, Tesla would still be turning a profit. And I personally don't see why Tesla should be criticized for taking advantage of the sale of zero emission credits. Yes, I'd rather the system didn't exist. And no, I don't think it's fair that companies can buy their way into making their fleets look cleaner than they actually are. But I also think that if the system exists, Tesla shouldn't be criticized for capitalizing on it. In regards to total automotive gross profit, Tesla made a shade over $2.1 billion, representing a 27.7% automotive gross margin. This is not something to ignore, and it shows that Tesla's economies of scale are really starting to swing into action. If you add in all the other revenue streams, you'll find that Tesla enjoyed $8.77 billion of revenue for a total gross profit of $2.06 billion which now means I should probably bring you to the total profit bit, because I know that's what you really all want to hear. Using a non-adjusted accounting system, Tesla's books recorded a $331 million profit, or 27 cents per share, which is up from 10 cents per share last quarter. Using the adjusted figures, which allow counting for more things that are not included in the other figures, Tesla's profits were an outstanding $874 million, or 76 cents per share up from $0.44 cents per share in the second quarter. Wall Street, in case you were wondering, was predicting that Tesla would manage an adjusted profit of $0.55 cents per share and $8.2 billion in revenue. Guess Wall Street was wrong. <laughs> Which brings me to the other snippets that are usually teased during these kind of events. And some of them are kind of interesting. At the top of the list are some potential changes to Cybertruck that Musk teased to investors. While its production debut is most certainly tied to progress on Giga Austin, something that Elon Musk reminded people during the call, according to Musk, design is still evolving on Cybertruck, stating that, quote, there are a lot of small improvements compared to what was unveiled. I think it's going to be better than what we showed. Noting that the truck's design uses a high hardness exoskeleton, Musk also seemed to hint that Cybertruck production may not be as smooth sailing as bringing Model Y to production was, noting that what Tesla is planning to do has never been done before and so, quote, there will probably be some challenges. But one thing that really got my attention was a comment Musk made during the call in which he said that Tesla shouldn't be thought of as a regular company, but rather a string of technology startups. It's an expansion of a tweet he made along similar lines earlier this week, but Musk explained that inside Tesla he views every product line and every production facility and competency as an individual startup. These individual startups each have their own specialities. Autonomous vehicle development, vehicle design, batteries, hardware design, chip manufacturing, charging, and so forth. Despite seeing them as small startups within a larger company, though, Musk, of course, does not see Tesla selling or spinning any of them off. Take from that what you will, especially given some of the challenges facing Tesla right now, like continuing quality control issues on delivered cars. As to future products, well, Tesla has confirmed that the Semi should start deliveries next year, and it's hoping that Gigafactory Berlin and Gigafactory Texas will both be operational and producing vehicles within a year. There were plenty of photographs shared of progress at Tesla's new production facilities, as well as photographs of the Model Y production lines that are being built up in Shanghai. 
So there you have it. Tesla's managed its fifth consecutive profitable quarter, and with production capabilities now getting close to 1 million vehicles per year, something Elon Musk kind of confirmed would be the target for next year during the earnings call, Tesla's really now a mainstream automaker that just happens to make electric vehicles. I'm sure it has got some challenges ahead relating to Cybertruck, the semi, bringing its new battery chemistries to volume production, which is something Elon was frustrated that mainstream media failed to understand after battery day, and of course dealing with the aforementioned quality control issues that are still causing headaches that Tesla really shouldn't be having anymore. But all in all, Tesla's just getting stronger and stronger, and I don't think it's going to be going anywhere anytime soon. Nice job, Tesla. That's it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.